What is up everybody, Dak here, and I'm back today, it's episode 3, and unfortunately I've run out of wood, so looks like I'm going to have to get some more. Ah, oh, there we go, that's handy. Uh, apologies if I'm out of focus at all, as I'm using an SLR, and it only has manual focus, so I had to focus it in the mirror that I've got up there onto an object on the desk. Hopefully it's alright. So, I've already, if you saw last episode, you could see I've already done two sides, the back and the bottom. Now I've got to do the inside of the horn and the top. So I won't be doing any curving or anything today. I'm just going to be cutting out the raw sheets. Oh, actually, this one will actually be the sides. Uh, I've decided the other two sheets are going to be um, curved for the horn. So I'm going to be cutting two sides and the top. And unfortunately the sides are, actually I think, uh, I think they're all going to be the same length now that I think about it. But they're going to be a different width. That should be all right. So I'm going to be marking three places across here and cutting down. And there's not going to be much left of this sheet by the time I'm done. So, oh, also I thought I'd mention something. Uh, earring protection is important. And so, as I'm exposed to loud noises quite a bit, I decided to get reusable earplugs. But not just normal reusable earplugs, but uh, ones which are specifically designed to... Um, what they do is, normal earplugs muffle highs, but these ones don't muffle highs as much. They reduce everything by well, about 20 dB, whereas most other ones reduce highs by 30, middle about 15, and lows not at all. Uh, it's very hard to reduce low frequencies using earplugs. So these ones are good for music. Um, you can go to a concert, and I've tested them with loud music, and it sounds half decent through them, much better than earplugs. So if you go to clubs a lot, and you don't like the idea of developing tinnitus or tinnitus, however you pronounce it, these are pretty useful. Uh, Etymotic earplugs. I'll link them in the description if you're interested in them. This is just a plug because I'm really impressed with how they work. Uh, some reviews did say they didn't work though, so it might depend on your ears, but I've got probably got average ears, so they work for me. So yeah, I think I'm going to get started and we'll see how I go. Uh, as for the next part, I'm not going to be doing a time lapse. Instead, I'm probably just going to be cutting quite a few times. Probably still music over the top. So, yep, we'll see how that goes. One oh one point seven. All right. I've just come out a certain distance that I know is definitely wide enough. Mark one oh one point seven. And assuming, make sure you make clear markings too. Line it up correctly. Now, is a good opportunity for a sanity check also. Since we know that this is 1.2 meters wide along the whole length, and we want to cut 100, then this should always be. 183 or there about. That's actually 185. So now I'm going to double check. It's going to measure the cross cut once. I do 1.7, that's correct. So this board is slightly wider than 127 meters. As long as everything's parallel, it should be fine. And this cut here, which is going to be 60 centimeters. Now, I'm not going to mark up the other sheets yet because unless I take into account the thickness of the blade, uh, there's not much point. And if I do take into account the thickness of the blade, it just means fit more math than I need to. And I'm not making the cuts yet. So it doesn't matter 
yet. I do know that all three will fit. See, take that to 120, and this should be 60, which it is. Another thing to take into account when doing cuts is, am I going to cut into the bench beneath this? So I'm going to move it along, and I'm going to have a look under and double check that I'm not about to take a chunk out of the desk, or even worse, run this into the metal frame of the desk. checked underneath and it's all good. I'm going to cut along here, but we're going to take it completely off and may as well mark up the other end. And then actually I'll tell you what, I'm going to, mark, I'm going to go across the top first. Uh, so I could potentially use that bit for something where it being a bit longer than 60 centimeters would be useful. Okay, so I've just shifted it so I know I'm not going to cut into the table with the new cut. Always question yourself, make sure you're doing everything correctly. And now I'm ready to do this cut. Also, mind the cable, don't drop into it, especially 240 volts. Nasty. Well, safety first. Don't rip your arm off making a single box. Rip your arm off after you've made a thousand boxes. Again, I'm going to reposition it so I don't cut into the bench. been cut out and unfortunately uh, right at the beginning here I was a bit off. Uh, according to the notch on the saw I was going straight but um, I did cut in a bit. Uh, that's unfortunate although I should just be able to epoxy it. Uh, that shouldn't be too much of a problem. I would have liked a perfect cut though but that don't always happen. Uh, so <laughs> don't trust that. Uh, that's why, if you notice, I put my glasses down and I look straight at the blade and make sure it's going in a straight line. I've heard too that these wood blades, I'm not going to touch it, it's my thing. Uh, uh, those blades aren't super accurate and I've actually heard a tip from someone that the best blade to use is, an, is a blade designed for cutting aluminium so it would be a uh, metal blade, although that's probably quite a fine tooth blade, 
and you need to go quite slowly with that so they don't get clogged up or anything. But um, if you don't have any blades or a saw and you get a saw and you don't have any blades, uh, you can get an aluminium blade. Regardless, aluminium blade will be harder wearing than a wood blade. Um, they sh should still have tanks and tips, but instead of having the that pattern, they're more like they're more in line, as therefore not uh, they don't take into account clearing so much. And as long as you're not cutting through some super thick bit and it gets jammed all the time, then you should be right. Okay, I'm now going to continue by marking up the next one, which I'm going to do another 60 centimeter cut. Uh, from this line just here, though it does have a bit of a bulge, but where I started is correct. So I'm going to mark from there, and I'll just use the belt sander to take that off there. Also, um, it might have been better to use a smaller circular saw than this, um, although I don't think I have a smaller one here. I think there's a 7 inch one somewhere. This is a 9 and a quarter inch one, I believe. So. I've, I've cut, well, so from this line down here, I'm going to mark 60 centimeters. Uh, right there. And I already know that should be correct there, and so I've already cracked it to the line. So I should just be able to. Follow, and I did fill this out a bit more than I need, so I extended that out, so should be able to go to, um, I'll actually go to 65, and make a line out to 65, which would be there, and I'll come back 5 centimeters right there. Now I'll get this ruler. And I'll make sure that that's equidistant from here. It's about 84. And this here is also about 84, it's a bit less. So I'm going to double check this distance here. Also, uh, you might have noticed I used this in here uh, just to stop it from falling straight down onto the ground means when it first goes it can hold on it and then I can finish the cut without any splintering. to the top, so this one needs to be uh, 61.7 centimeters wide, or hang on, I think it's 63.4, yeah, 63.4, so always make sure, double check, and double check before you commit to any cuts.
and I've done another mock-up. As you can see, it's starting to come together. Uh, you can start to see what I'm envisioning for this. Hopefully it doesn't fall apart right now. It's only being held together by that one clamp there. So, uh, yeah, you can see that this is the radiating area. Of course, I'm going to be sanding this all down to a point and these inner sheets will be curved. They're not curved yet, they're just forming a, a triangular waveguide. Um, but, yeah, it looks pretty good. I'm happy with it so far. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, subscribe if you're interested. Part 4 coming up. Uh, could be a wee bit off, but I'm thinking for part 4. I might start attaching these panels together properly with glue and screws. And I'm going to give Kirby and that a try in shortly. So, I'm looking forward to it. Thanks for watching.